made a film last year called Bobby Fischer Against the World. And uh, the producer of that film, Stanley Buckthall, it was a family advisor to the Strasburgs, who, um, as many people know, Lee Strasberg was Marilyn's acting coach, and she left her estate to him. Well, of course, Marilyn's possessions and documents had been combed through, but uh, there were two boxes that were left in storage that had never been archived or um, really examined. They found these documents and, along with Stanley Buckfall, decided to collect them and put them into a book and adapt them for a film. I was never a Marilyn buff. Um, I was not someone who was schooled in all the scandals and stats and conspiracy theories. Um, so I kind of came to it sort of fresh. And when I started looking at the letters and documents, um, I was pretty surprised to see that there was actually a lot more in Maryland that I could actually relate to as a, as a woman, and as, also as a woman in this business. Obviously, documentaries have used letters and they've had um, actors or narrators perform, you know, read them as voiceover. Um, I felt that there was something very interesting in these documents about the process of acting itself, of what it means to be an actress in Hollywood. Even 60 years ago, I felt that there were very, the issues that Marilyn was talking about in these letters and notes were very relatable to um, today. I think we all know her as, as a brilliant comedian. Um, she played that dumb blonde who's actually smarter than you think, you know, perfectly. And that's not easy. I mean, you know, she didn't become Marilyn Monroe by accident. She did it. She became that person because she played that role so well. But then when you see sort of after 1953, 1954 with Niagara, you see Marilyn pushing. You see her trying to do different dramatic roles like Bus Stop. Um, of course, you know, working with Arthur Miller to develop The Misfits. You see her sort of pushing out of that. And I never really understood that kind of two-part story of her career. The roles that were given to her under the studio contract with Fox as a contract player, and then the roles that after she broke her contract and renegotiated, that she was driving, um, that she was creating. And that, that was a really interesting divide to me. I think that the exploitation of Marilyn's image should be set in the context of a human being, Marilyn, and that it shouldn't be seen simply as an accident that Marilyn is so famous. We should understand what she did to create that. And I think that I won't find it annoying if we understand that she deserves credit for this remarkable character that she created, which is the most enduring icon of femininity in the 20th century and now into the 21st century even more iconic. So I think it's all great as long as we're grounding it in a human being and not seeing it as some sort of accident of pop culture.